Jeff Probst called Rob Sesternino the smartest player to never win after he was voted out and finished in third place on Survivor the Amazon. At first glance, it seemed like Rob did all that he could in order to make it to the end except win the final immunity challenge. However, the immunity challenge loss on day 38 is not why Rob Sesternino lost and it actually happened earlier than that. So what happened and what could have been done to avoid that fate? Let's find out. Before we start, I want to thank you all for supporting this channel. If you want to see these videos weeks before they are ever released here on YouTube, then consider supporting this channel on Patreon. On that Patreon, you can vote for whose stories I tell and get an exclusive video every month about the topic of your choosing. Thank you for your support. A few things are needed to be known as a basis for Rob and how he wanted to play this game. He originally applied for Big Brother and was heavily influenced by Dr. Will of Big Brother 2. I also have an awesome story video about Dr. Will and about Rob. You don't need to watch the Dr. Will one to understand what's happening here. However, if you haven't watched Survivor the Amazon, then I recommend watching the Rob Sesternino story video so that you have the proper context to watch the rest of this video. So so Big Brother didn't cast Rob, Survivor did. He was still a super fan that watched both shows. As we all know, the final three immunity challenge of Survivor the Amazon had Jenna winning and she picked Matt to go to the end with as she knew he was an easier person to beat, which she was correct about. Matt purposely lost the final immunity challenge to force either Rob or Jenna to bring him to the end as he knew he was guaranteed to be sitting at the end no matter what. So what we are going to do here is rewind time and essentially edit Rob's game so that this doesn't happen. Matt doesn't lose the challenge on purpose and even if Jenna does win, she still picks Rob over Matt. So let's go all the way back and rewind from day 38 when Rob lost back to day 25 and alter Rob's game. Let's set him on the winning path in this alternate universe. What we are going to do is not fundamentally change Rob's game and how he was playing as he could have easily just not flipped on the men going into the merge as they were up six to four and just begong the women until it came to the final six men and then cut some deals to get himself to the end. It was a very likely thing to do, but that's not how Rob was playing this game. And since he was not playing in the simplistic fashion, we are not approaching this experiment that way either. Instead, we will simply be tweaking the way he played and smooth out the rough edges to make it as perfect as it can be with the information that we have from the show. So it is day 25 and Rob has just finished flipping on Roger and Dave at the last two tribal councils, both of which thought they were good with Rob. Only Dave is on the jury and Dave seems to value loyalty above all and wants to be viewed as a morally sound person. Rob's current alliance right now consists of himself, Alex, Jenna, and Heidi, while Matt and Butcher on the outs, but still good with Rob, and Christy and Dina are kind of doing their own thing, though Dina thinks she is in with Alex, Jenna, Heidi, and Rob. However, Matt and Rob have a strange relationship that starts to truly get explored here, where Rob is pretending to be a good guy, feeding Matt information every morning about what is going on, and Matt relays that to Butch. But what Rob is really doing is not being a good guy, and instead feeding Matt a load of garbage just to keep him busy every day. Every morning I give Matt a debriefing of the wild goose chases I want him to work on for the day just to keep his mind busy so he doesn't really have any chance to figure out what's actually going on. So here is where we make the first change to Rob's game. Despite how funny and entertaining it is on TV, Rob is not going to feed Matt garbage anymore as this is a risky move. Instead, Rob is going to talk to Matt every morning like he already has and tell him mm, only the information that Matt needs to know so that Matt and Rob are good and they're a true twosome, it will make Matt trust Rob more and it eliminates Rob needing to apologize later on in the season to Matt since Rob is being truthful with Matt from the beginning. Matt won't consider him to be devious either since he has been lying to him. First, I need to come clean with you. Okay. I had been telling you that the men were gonna stick together after we got rid of Roger and Dave, but that wasn't true. But Rob can be very devious. Rob has betrayed a number of people to get where he is today. All Rob is doing is controlling the information Matt is getting instead of giving him fake information. In episode nine, Alex and Jenna go on a reward together and they bring back cookies. Rob says in front of everyone that Matt and Butch are out fishing and we're in control, let's just eat the cookies, they'll never know. Now for the winning path to work, Rob cannot do this and in confessional, he won't come across as cocky about his power position in the game and this is where another turn is gonna take for Rob's game. We could just eat the cookies and Matt and Butch wouldn't know. 
I mean, they're really on the outside looking in power-wise. Even if they found out, what are they going to do? In fact, from here on out, Rob is not going to get high on his own power, and instead, he will take the Dr. Will approach that he learned from watching him on Big Brother. So what is that approach? Chance of me winning the show is zero, so I certainly would like to be here the last three weeks. Chance of me winning HOH, right next to zero. <laughs> Who are we kidding? I'm the weakest player in the house. And Dr. Will does this all game over and over and over again, planting the seeds of, you. I can't win, you're gonna beat me, no one is gonna vote for me at the end, and he just keeps watering those seeds to the point that people start to believe him, despite it really not being true. And you don't think that that's a possibility for Monica or for Will? He's not gonna win. Think about that. He does this so much so that he is basically carried to the final two and then beats the person who brought him there. five to do you are the winner of big brother 2. from now on rob in this alternate game is going to draw a larger inspiration from dr well and will never let his head get too big so the next vote out is dina from what we saw on the show and rob didn't have any way of stopping this from happening and his only choice was really either to vote for Dina and get her out, or vote with Dina, but she still goes home. In this case, we're gonna stick with what he did on the show, and he's gonna remain too loyal to his larger alliance and vote for Dina. Now, unlike Dave, Dina is a gamer and seems to respect how you play the game above all else. Now, of course, Rob doesn't know this fully because he hasn't seen Final Tribal Council like we have from the show, but Dina in Final Tribal Council, when Jenna and Matt are sitting there, asks Jenna, why do you think that we should be valuing uh, need above all else and Jenna tries to defend herself but it's clear from the way Dean is asking the question that Dina does not value need she values how you play the game above all else so that actually will work out in Rob's favor episode 11 is next and in this alternate timeline there's no reason for anything to change with Alex so he's still gonna trust Rob enough to tell him that hey Rob I'm voting you out a final four and Rob of course will still not be okay with this because he wants to win the game the way I see it if I win immunity my vote goes for you, and I'm sure that if you win, you're going to vote me up, and that's totally cool. I have never stopped playing Survivor, and over my dead body will I turn over and let somebody just pass me by. So here is another big turning point for the season, and this is essentially how Rob is going to win. What he is actually going to do here is instead of needing to apologize to Matt for lying to him all this time, which he actually does in the show, instead, Matt trusts him and he has no reason not to trust him. So we have fixed any need for apologizing to Matt and Rob is going to vote out Alex and his conversation is shifted from apologizing to instead locking in a final two deal with Matt who of course trusts Rob. At no point earlier in the season have we seen Rob doing this with anyone else. So now is as good a time as any. Matt will likely agree and then Rob will tell him how Alex wants to vote Rob out and there is no need to tell Matt that actually Alex doesn't want to do that till final four just that he wants to do it, period. Now, with this final two deal in place, Matt doesn't want this at all, and of course agrees to vote out Alex. Rob then approaches Christy, and just like before, instead of simply asking her if she wants to vote out Alex, which he already knows she's gonna say yes to, he instead decides to take the time to frame it as, hey, Matt wants Alex gone, and Rob wants to know if Christy's on board with this plan. Since Matt does want Alex gone, and Christy, of course, says yes, because as we learned, Dude, I'm with you. I'm with you to get Alex out. Just because Alex, ah, I could care less about him. Rob still wins the immunity challenge to ensure his safety, and Alex is easily voted out four to three. Episode 12 starts off, and of course, Jenna and Heidi are raging mad at Rob, as they should be. But unlike what we see in the show, Rob is going to accept the heat and also work to deflect it as best as possible. He will still admit to flipping, but this time he frames it the same way he did with Matt. He tells the girls that Alex told him to his face that he was going to vote Rob off. Once again, leaving out the part where Alex said that he was going to do this at Final Four, because now Rob is really crafting a narrative of him being the victim, and he now has Matt, Christy, Jenna, and Heidi all hearing this narrative without any chance to talk to Alex. What Rob does next in the show is get rattled by all the vitriol that he actually gets spewed his way from flipping on them and voting on Alex. And of course, he doesn't like that Matt wins the family reward and gives it to everyone. So he makes a proposition to Jenna for a final two deal, 
and says he feels like she is his best chance of winning. In this alternate timeline, Rob is glad that Matt wins the family reward and gives it to everyone because it makes Matt look really good. His conversation with Jenna is instead talking about how good Matt is and how he thinks none of them stand a shot at Matt in the final two as, hey, take a look at him. He's winning challenges and he's completely flipping everyone's views on him because he just gave everyone the family reward. Who has ever done that in Survivor? Whether Jenna completely buys this yet at this point, is not really the point. What matters is that Rob is planting seeds about Matt turning around his game and being a bigger threat than they all had originally thought of him. Now this next part is a little bit harder to figure out as what happens on the show is that Jenna wins immunity, Heidi is the target, Heidi tries to convince Christy to join her and Jenna, but Christy isn't fully buying into their final three deal with her. Heidi and Jenna, they do kiss my ass, but they just want something from me. So why would I want to give them something if Heidi and Jenna hasn't done anything in return. What we have determined so far is that while Rob is planting seeds about how his hands were tied and Alex needed to go and he didn't really have a choice, it doesn't mean Jenna and Heidi will fully buy this. So Heidi still pitches to Christy to join the girls and Christy is still wishy-washy on this idea because all season the girls have been mistreating her and she doesn't feel valued by them. That hasn't changed at all. At this point, what we saw on the show after Jenna blew up on Rob is that Matt and Butch are still cool with Rob. In this alternate timeline, Jenna doesn't blow up on Rob as he doesn't have that final two conversation with her and of course Matt and Butch are still good with him because they were good with him anyways. As we know, Matt isn't really making the strategic decisions around here. Rob is just framing it that way, so he goes to ask Christy about who she wants out that night to feel her out, and she says, you know what, I don't really know, as all of a sudden she has this realization that she has a real shot to win this entire game. I don't know. The question is, who can I go farther with? What can get me to be the sole survivor? You know what I mean? He goes back to Matt and Butch and relays to them that Christy says she doesn't know who she's voting for tonight. It could be any one of us. She could be voting with the girls. So they get on board with Rob since they don't want to go home. Rob then talks to Heidi and tells her that, hey, Christy <laughs> said that she could be voting for any of us. Like, all of us are fair game to Christy. Heidi, of course, doesn't want to go home, so she agrees to vote with the men along with Jenna. And at Tribal, Christy, the one who's being wishy-washy, goes home five to one. By the way, on the show, Christy actually votes against Heidi and Jenna. So she would never have locked in with Heidi and Jenna anyways. Episode 13 starts off and unlike on the show, Rob does not tell Jenna and Heidi to their face that they're being voted out next because that would be full of yourself and full of the power that you have in the game and instead takes a more humble approach and just thanks them for voting with him. He makes them feel value and inflates their ego a little bit and he then asks them who do they want to go next. More than likely at this point, if Rob's been doing his job correctly, they will say Matt as he is a challenge beast. Now in this episode, Matt still wins reward and takes Rob with him on the reward since they are best buds. That hasn't changed and they have that final two deal. However, Matt does win immunity, keeping himself safe. So things are a little dicey as the women just said they wanted Matt gone. Of course, Matt's not an option. After that, Rob talks up Matt to the girls saying how Oh, Matt's just so good, and he's really turned around his game. Look, he's now won four challenges. There's so many wins. Jenna, as we learned on the show, was starting to get sick of the reward, but by the time the immunity challenge is done, she's really sick. And at this point, Heidi has to go next because Rob's in a conundrum. He cannot be in a final four with Heidi and Jenna as they are an unbreakable pair, and no one wants to go home on rocks. Heidi is in self-preservation mode and pitches for Jenna to go home next because Jenna's sick. She's genuinely, genuinely concerned about her health. And she feels like just that one extra day, she will not make it. So Rob tells Heidi, hey, I don't make the strategic decisions around here. Let me go run this by Matt and see what Matt says. He pitches it to Matt that Jenna is sick and Heidi should go next since she has bigger threat. Matt agrees, and so Heidi is voted out. Now entering the final four, just like on the show, Jenna's feeling on the outs as she should. So she wins immunity to save herself, and Rob pleads to Matt to save him over Butch. Matt agrees, just like on the show, and talks to Jenna. And Jenna agrees to vote out Butch, since Butch really hasn't done anything to get to where he is now. Butch gets voted out 3-1. to one. So now it's final three time, and Rob thanks them both for not voting him out, and he's just so glad he's here. He just, he feels very humbled. He feels very... Oh, guys, you guys did me such a favor. He talks to Matt and pumps him up about how good of a game he's playing. Now, we know Matt isn't all too familiar with Survivor like Rob is, so Rob can really fill Matt's head here with how people who win a lot of challenges have been revered in the past. 
Just look at Colby Donaldson. He then talks to Jenna about how good Matt is and how Rob had to screw over people he never wanted to. He didn't want to vote those people out. And the jury, they're just not going to respect his game for doing this because juries value loyalty. The chance of me winning the show is zero, so I certainly would like to be here the last three weeks. The chance of me winning HOH, right next to zero. <laughs> Who are we kidding? I'm the weakest player in the house. At the immunity challenge, it doesn't really matter who wins now. Matt has been in a final two deal with Rob since episode 9, and he feels like he can beat Rob easily since, hey, I have won a lot of challenges and I am in the good graces of a lot of people, and I gave everyone that family visit. However, he is now loyal to Rob and knows he has a better chance of winning immunity than Rob does. Jenna has been listening to Rob since episode 9 to talk about how Matt He's a challenge beast. He's really turned around his story and he's kind of calling the shots around here. As Rob hasn't been making strategic decisions, Rob tells them, hey, let me go talk to Matt because Matt's got to make the call on what we're doing. Giving the perception that Matt's making the call, but obviously in this one-on-one -on -one conversation between Rob and Matt, Rob's making the call, just making it seem like Matt has been making the call this entire time. So on the show, Matt purposely loses the immune challenge. Jenna wins and picks Matt. However, it's a little hard for us to know if Matt doesn't purposely drop who wins this challenge. So there's two scenarios. One is that if Matt wins, he takes Rob to the end and Rob probably wins either six to one or five to two with Matt getting Butch's vote for sure and possibly Dave. If Jenna takes Rob, it is a lot tighter, but she gets Heidi's vote, her BFF, Alex's vote as Rob flipped on him and possibly Dave's vote if he doesn't like how Rob didn't play morally, which is the same reason Dave would vote for Matt over Rob. However, Rob gets Matt his final two deals vote, Butch's vote as he kept him close all game until he basically had no choice at final four, and Dina's vote since she values gameplay, and Rob has made so many more moves than Jenna, and Christy since Christy did swear she would not vote for Jenna or Heidi to win. Now at the reunion, Christy claimed that she voted for Jenna over Matt since Jenna played a better game. So let's say Christy does operate on that logic, and Rob has played a better game, and so he should beat Jenna. Four to three. Anyways, thanks for listening as I play a very hypothetical game of how Rob Sessionino could have won. I am sure if he made these different moves that I described, then things would have played out differently than how I described them. But the biggest factors in him winning would have been that final two deal with Matt, pumping up Matt's ego and pumping up Matt's other people and selling, just selling a narrative of how good Matt is and never trying to make that final two deal with Jenna and never going around telling people I'm tricking Matt and, and telling Jenna and Heidi to their face that he was gonna vote them out. It may have worked, they may have seen right through it, but we'll just never know. Tune in next time as we weave the tale of Christy Smith, the first deaf castaway of Survivor. Thanks for watching, and if you like the content you see here, then please support me and this channel on Patreon. That Patreon has every video I release weeks earlier than when they go up here on YouTube, and your financial support makes this channel possible. So thank you.